Very final question from the floor. And I mean it this time. Uh, yeah, you're still at the very end. Um, in regards to the military interventions over the, the 2000s and uh, the, the beginning of the 21st century of the United States and Iraq and Afghanistan, and uh, maybe they weren't done, done perfectly, do you worry uh, ever that there's a particular weariness um, among Western populations, especially now with sort of anti-globalization mindset and a more isolationist sort of attitude, that a president like Obama might feel that his hands are tied in how much he can get involved in, in particular interventions? And do you worry that maybe America might be shirking its responsibility on the global stage a bit too much for the, because mm -hmm. for political reasons, even though they may, a president might feel that it would be good to make a more strong decision, but doesn't feel they, they politically can? Yeah, I do. I, I, meaning, um, I do think that the appetite for foreign engagement, not just military, but foreign engagement and interventionism, whether it's for humanitarian purposes or pur purposes of ridding a country of a dictator or allegedly, you know, weapon system, that appetite comes and goes. Um, Mostly, by the way, not so much on, the, on casualties. I've, I have found, you know, there was this theory in the late 90s, um, mostly after the, a Somalia incident with the United States military, that the American people had become weary of casualties. The fact is, if you can convince the American people that what you want the soldiers and Marines and airmen to do makes sense, that it has some outcome that is better for the country. They're actually unbelievably supportive. I mean, we are well supported in our country, remarkably so, because I grew up in that army that came out of Vietnam and was not supportive. It's one of the reasons I think we, sh we have decided to stick with the all-volunteer force, because you can ask an all-volunteer force to do things that you might not be able to ask a conscript or a draft force to do. So I do think your instinct about, you know, the 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 changes in a population's feelings about what's more important, domestic or interventionist. The best leaders that I've been around, meaning political leaders, have been able to articulate, make sense. I have a phrase I use, leaders have to be sense makers. If you want to lead, you have to be able to make sense of things for those you lead, right? So if you're the president, you've got the biggest responsibility to make sense of all. The best presidents have been able to make sense of how to balance our foreign engagement with our domestic needs. And not through the use necessarily of fear, but rather through a very pragmatic conversation about you know, the fact that we are the world's status quo power. We have economic interests globally. We believe in the rule of law as a matter of our constitution. We promote democratic values, you know, maybe sometimes one could argue sometimes too much and in places where they may not be applicable, but the fact is that's who we are. And therefore, you can't, if that's who you are, you can't withdraw to Fortress America and tell the rest of the world, you know, good luck, you know, send us the odd Christmas letter and let us know how your relatives are doing. So, and where does Obama fit into that? I think he got, Obama, got off to a really bad start as president in terms of foreign policy. And he got off to a bad start because he ran and said to the American people, um, we, I know, he said, I know you're tired of the Middle Eastern wars. I'm not sure he was right about that, to tell you the truth. In fact, he probably wasn't. But because you're tired of it, we're gonna, I'm, I'm going to be the president and get you out. By the end of my tenure, I'm going to get you out of Iraq. I'm going to get you out of Afghanistan. We're going we're gonna to take care of, you know, West Virginia before we take care of Baghdad. And I'm going to use foreign policy far more than I use military. The reason that's the wrong approach is it's a pendulum swing. And pendulum swings are bad in a democracy. You know, you, you, you can't go back and forth that dramatically. You know, all in or all out. By the way, by the end of his time, he came around. I mean, we still got 10,000 soldiers in Afghanistan and 5,500 in, in Iraq. And he, he wasn't an easy sell, I'll tell you that. But when, he, but when we were able to show him that we had legitimate interests in being there, and it wasn't just for the Iraqis or the Afghans, it was for us. 
and our system of allies and partners and the spillover effects that come out of the Middle East. He came around. Um, I'll, I'll just end by suggesting this about governments in general, whoever's in a government, meaning whoever's leading it at a particular time. Generally, governments do fine if they are a bit ambiguous. So you're never going to know exactly, those of you that are Irish, you're never going to know exactly where the Taoiseach is trying to steer the country. And you shouldn't. You know what I mean? I mean, um, Otto von Bismarck in Germany once said that, you know, democracy is like sausage. You shouldn't see how it's made. <laughs> and I have to say, I think that's true. You have to, you have to know most about it, but you, know, you shouldn't want to know every little ingredient, right? And, and, and in any country, whether it's the United States or Ireland or Germany. So it's okay to be a little ambiguous at times if you're a politician. It's okay, for example, for NATO to have a little bit of ambiguity about how committed we are to NATO or for, or for Taiwan to be a little ambiguous about you know, how committed we are to the one China. But unpredictability is not good when you're the global power. And I, I sense we're a little unpredictable right now. But here's my prediction. It won't last. We'll go back to being pretty predictable, maybe a little ambiguous at times. But I think I, I wouldn't worry if I were you about whether the United States is careening for some kind of disaster. It, it's, it has too many checks and balances for that to happen. So, Well, thanks for your attention here today, and, and uh, I wish you all the best. And if you want to be a leader someday, just remember, you got to make people belong. All right, thanks. So the, the James Joyce Award for unintelligible writing. I thank you very much. <laughs> No, I, th I really do. I appreciate your time. And, and again, I was very impressed that it was all run by students, for students. I don't think I've seen a faculty. You look like a faculty member. But, uh, but most, most of all, I've been interacting with uh, students, and I think that's just fantastic. So. Can we get one more round of applause? Yeah. yeah, well done. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. And now?